I'm a single parent, struggling to make ends meet, but really looking forward to the day that I might be able to once again own my own home. Property prices and rents continue to rise, forcing that dream even more out of my grasp. When I think about the tax rate that is negative gearing, I'm astonished at the subsidisation of investing in property at the expense of low and middle income families. Do you think negative gearing should be abolished or at least quarantined, only available for new dwellings, and that thus giving low income earners the opportunity to get into the property market? Let's start with John Simon. Well, first of all, we have an acute land shortage, particularly on the eastern seaboard, and I think this has been brought about by decades of inefficient government at federal, state, local level. Uh, the taxes today, you know, when I was a kid, they'd, you'd have a subdivision um, and the cost of services was included in the taxes we pay. Today, particularly in regional Australian and capital cities, up to between $100,000 and $150,000 per block is levied by taxes onto the developer who slugs the first home buyer and we wonder about the, 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 the booming debt. But, John, debt. I'm, going to, I'm going to bring you up because that question was about a different no, sort no, of... In fact, well, tax I'm, relief I'm that's been that. given to investors. Absolutely. I come back to overhauling the tax system. Negative gearing wasn't designed for people who can afford to go and buy $1 million, $2 million, $3 million houses or, or apartments for negative gearing to offset the bulk of their interest payment off their tax. So negative gearing does need to be looked at in the, in the tax system because I don't think it's fair at the moment. I think it leans very heavily to the high income earners and that needs to be uh, brought into line as is hundreds of other aspects of the tax. Right, let's hear brief answers from our panel on this. Carol. Well, affordable housing is a huge issue globally. And um, uh, however, negative gearing in this country, I believe is an absolute political hot potato and no government is going to touch it. Yes, but should they? Um, yes. I actually agree with John. I actually think that when we're looking at the whole tax mix, it definitely should be looked at. John. David, I... Uh, David, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think, yeah, you know, Tony, you're absolutely right. The, the, the negative gearing is something which I wasn't familiar with until I came to Australia. It was a phenomenon I came across here. I've only recently dis discovered it exists, and I, it does seem to me as something that definitely needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth? I, I think uh, the latest figures are that of uh, in the September home sales, and John will know this better than I, but I think only 12% were first home buyers. Uh, the others were negative gearers or second and other home buyers, and that's a big problem, big social problem for us, and it wasn't intended to be used as it, as it is. It is a hot potato, but it does have to so be... So there's a there. system in place that enables rich people to buy more property and to be subsidised by poorer taxpayers for yes, doing it. that's right. This is the logic of this, isn't it? That's the um, only logic. Why is it impossible, apparently, for governments to touch this? Well, I suspect... Because there they're are... foregoing billions in revenue. Yes, they are. But I suspect there would be so many people who have got one, two or more properties that way... Regular that, workers. That, yeah. that, Regular workers. ..that yes. the government makes... Governments and oppositions make the decision that it's a, it's an, it's a vote loser. Mm. Mm. It's an entrenched practice in Australia. I, I mean, it's just an expectation that everybody has. But Leanne put a finger on, on the, the real issue here. If it were devoted to new property mm. development, to, to new creation of new housing, it would actually go to relieve the, the shortage mm. of housing. And yeah. I can really sympathise with Leanne mm. because Western Australia's got the worst affordability yeah. of housing and the least amount of rental and the highest rental growth in Australia. I've got a question down the front there. I'll go quickly to you. Go ahead. 